As American culture penetrates other cultures around the world, it's important to stop and think about how those cultures are being affected. When American companies go overseas, they have a completely new task ahead of them. Finding a new way to connect emotionally with potential consumers who have never heard of them. In the US, Coke has transformed the way that we view an entire season, especially Christmas, as our depiction of Santa Claus was created by the Coca-Cola company. Coca-Cola was first introduced in Latin America in the early 20th century, but now it dominates the hearts, minds, and wallets of even indigenous Maya communities in Mexico. You might be wondering how this happened, in the 1970s, Mexico experienced economic growth, primarily because of tourism. In April of 1970, Cancun was created to serve as a major tourist destination in the country. As a result, it boomed from having only 426 people to becoming currently one of Mexico's most important cities with over 600,000 inhabitants. But what does Coca-Cola and even Pepsi have to do with this? At the time, more indigenous Maya in the area turned to this new tourist economy to help them earn a living. As tourism became the most reliable way to earn money, they moved away from their local farming practices, meaning that they now had to buy commercial food instead of growing it. This has led to lower nutritional status, which has meant undernourished children and obese adults. By the 1990s, Mexico became one of the world's largest consumers of soft drinks, accounting for as much as 15% of Coke's international sales and 20% of Pepsi's. But how does this look in person? As mentioned earlier, Coke has tailored their marketing strategies to their new local context. What this means is that the way we experience Coke in the US looks vastly different from how people in Latin America experience it. Jason Nagata, explains how in the town of Santiago Atitlan in Guatemala, the Coca-Cola company fills television programming, street billboards, and even local stores themselves with Coca-Cola branding. He describes how one store owner explains that if they sell 50 cases of Pepsi, then Pepsi will come and paint his store for free. As these stores are often in need of repainting, Pepsi and Coke use it as an opportunity to promote their brand. But that's not the only way that Coke is influencing these communities. Coke is also said to be an important remedy. Originally in the 1760s, soft drinks were invented as a form of healthier water because, at the time, waterborne pathogens were a major source of disease. Coke itself was originally a headache remedy, but now in Latin America, Coca-Cola and other soft drinks can be used, for example, for religious practices instead of wine, rationalized by saying that carbonation drives out evil spirits. Here, Coke is an alternative to alcohol consumption, curbing the rates of alcoholism, which can be seen as a good thing. Coke is also used as a religious offering before important ceremonies like weddings. These ways that these food systems integrate with local cultures is called cultural hybridization. But even local traditional healers called curanderos might prescribe Coke for sore throats. But most importantly, Coke and Pepsi commonly cost less than bottled water, especially if purchased in a returnable glass bottle. So in a sense, drinking Coke can actually prevent a bacterial infection. But this perfectly shows how the tourist economy is certainly a double-edged sword, giving both economic freedom and nutritional distress to local inhabitants, not only in Latin America, but around the world. How responsible are transnational corporations for the negative health that they cause in countries around the world, especially vulnerable populations? So remember this, the sun never sets on the Coca-Cola empire. So stay tuned because future research will certainly have something to say about coca colonization. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did putting it together. So this video is based on about three articles and I'm actually leaving them linked down below. Um, 
So if you have any comments or any questions or anything, just feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And we look forward to putting out even more content for you all.